up in the sky. Look, it's captivating. It's energizing. It's Alliance's Heroes. Alliance's is the destination for entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, inventors, leaders, celebrities, and startups. Where our heroes in business align. Now, here's your host flying in, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. Yeah, it's going to be another incredible day as we unlock the secrets of our heroes. Later on in the show, we've got the founder of legal zoom so make sure you stay tuned and by the way thank you for the feedback we continue to have from having the head of facebook groups on she's the one in charge of all facebook groups so make sure you go to alliances.com that's e-l-i-a-n-c-e-s.com the only place where entrepreneurs align well let's get started with our next hero unbelievable when you hear what he's Done, and when you hear what he's going to be doing, we have Michael Camarada. And before I tell you his contact information, let's go right into it. Michael, you made your first million at age 13. Tell me, was that like a lemonade stand? Everybody else is doing lemonade stands, and yet you're doing your first million. What were you doing, and how did you do that? Web hosting. I actually started from a video game, uh, but then I won my own. Uh, server, and then I ended up uh, sharing space on my server, and then it became a web hosting company. See, so all you parents out there that are telling your kids to get off from playing video games, well, look, it could happen, and they become millionaires. All right, so you were the co-founder of Schmidt's Naturals. Talk to us about that and how you created it. Yeah, I think we, we started off in 2015, uh, Schmidt's Naturals, with the goal of making a natural alternative uh, to traditional deodorants, and most of the people didn't think natural deodorant worked. And we had a formulation that was a powder-based uh, a formulation, but it was only in a jar at the time. And so it was a simple solution. We put it in a stick, and then we bring it to mass retail. The problem is powder-based natural deodorants have never been manufactured in mass before. So we actually had to build a factory, and then when we started off with four people, 1,200 square feet, and then grew to over 160 employees, 30,000 square feet a couple years later, and then sold the Unilever. That is a huge accomplishment. You hear all that, listeners? He ended up building it and selling it to Unilever, which is just absolutely phenomenal. But why did you choose that specific industry to go into? I mean, what sparked it? Well, a lot of people have been telling me that 50% of all diagnoses come from what you put in, on, around your body. So... Most people think about like being healthy as like I'm going to eat healthy, I'm going to go to the gym after Fourth of July or New Year's or whatnot. But no one's thinking about every product they touch from when they wake up, they go to the bathroom, the restroom, the shower, they go into the kitchen, they have the household cleaners. So starting with the personal care uh, segment and really deodorant, which is one of the most sensitive spot to treats your armpits it's and it's like the it's like the exhaust for your body and so we started there to make a natural deodorant that works and then we started branching off into like toothpaste and and uh soaps and shampoos and making it synthetic free so there's no carriers in the in the scent uh it's a true natural essential oil and from there it just took off and it can and we made it affordable because beforehand there's natural deodorant a, they were liquid-based, so they weren't as effective, and uh, the powdered-based deodorants weren't really prevalent. And so when we were able to get the powdered-based deodorant and formulation with quality essential oils to mass market at affordable pricing, that kind of changed the game. And then you end up selling it to Unilever. Tell us about that part and uh, what took place. And then once you sold it, what did you decide to do? I mean, what, you know, what do you do after such a huge accomplishment? Well, it, my initial idea was I wanted to go IPO. Like, I was dead set on, on making uh, modern wellness that using natural ingredients and plant-based ingredients mainstream and affordable pricing. And so I was going an IPO route, and we had 11 offers from different strategics that, uh, and then a lot of uh, PE funds and, and, and investors that wanted us to go IPO. And we were going to do that, and then I actually, by a fluke chance, um, I got a call from Goldman Sachs, and they were like, Unilever wants to meet with you. And at that point, I was like, that's an IPO. And actually, 
uh, my father was like, you got to take the meeting. And so I went up to New York on a Friday so I can spend a weekend in New York. And uh, it was supposed to be a 30-minute meeting with this guy, Case Takova. I can't pronounce his name properly, but he was the head of North America for Unilever at that time. And it ended up being like a six-hour meeting and seeing the new facility. And and he's like, we can do everything you want to do in your IPO. Because initially, I was going to pitch my IPO strategy and let him tear it apart so I can fix my holes in my strategy. Uh, but he actually embraced it. And, and it's like, you can do all of that at Unilever. And we can do it faster and, and bring the, the brand globally. And so at that point, I was like, did I sell myself on that idea? Was it just an off day? The next morning, he calls me when I'm in New York City. He's like, I'm at the Global Citizens Concert. Uh, let's meet at the American Museum of History. And so I was like, I went out there and to take a second uh, uh, opinion on it and see him again. And uh, long story short is actually Jane Goodall, who's a family friend of mine, was speaking at the Global Citizens Concert. And I was like, hey, can you kind of borrow a pass to go there and, and see your concert? And told him about Unilever. And she's like, Paul Pullman's here? And I'm like, you know Unilever? <laughs> like, wait. And uh, then she told me how good they are and that Paul was on the sustainability programs. And th- then we had a great meeting. And then next thing you know, I totally pivoted. I actually had to uh, – we had money raised, a call upon from funds to be a bridge to the IPO. And I actually had to go backwards and say, no, we're not doing that anymore. We're going, I'm selling Unilever. So it was quite the interesting 48-hour experience. And then – uh, sold to Unilever and joined as a CEO of a division and uh, grew it globally. And uh, and that's how the Unilever deal unfolded. That's incredible. And we're going to find out what you're doing next, listeners, because it's going to blow you away because you're listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. Make sure you go to alliances.com. That's E L I A N. CES.com. It is the only place where entrepreneurs align. And we've got Michael Camarada, the co-founder of Smith's Naturals. And you're going to find out right now. And by the way, too, Michael, I want to let you know is, is that I smell really good. And you know what? I think it's probably because of your products. So I appreciate it. And definitely, you know what? If you make sure you go and you check out Schmidt's Naturals. Now, Michael, Steal the thunder because you end up selling your company, Schmidt's Naturals, to Unilever. I mean, it can't get much bigger than that instead of going IPO. So what do you do after that? What are you doing now? Well, as of Monday this week, I became the global CEO of a company called Neptune Health and Wellness, which is publicly traded on NASDAQ and the Canadian Stock Exchange. It is a cannabis uh, company that actually has been around for 50 years. They started in supplements and curl oil, omega-3s, and then they sold the curl oil business to focus on cannabis, and they're at the center of all ingredients. Like The one thing that I learned in the manufacturing side is the extraction process is the most valuable part. So when we would get fragrance uh, for our deodorants or it's plant derived. You have to get the plants, and then you you extract the oil, and then you formulate, and then it becomes part of the the, the ingredient. So Neptune is really unique, as it has a huge science team that has the, that's been working in this industry for 50 years on extractions. So I was very lucky and fortunate to be able to join them as the global CEO and and uh, service not just one brand, but hundreds of brands because they provide extractions to Telray and Canopy and, uh, and, and Teagot and many others. Super congratulations. That's huge news. And again, you can reach now, Michael Camarada, at NeptuneCorp.com, publicly held company. Again, NeptuneCorp.com. And of course, we'll have it on our website at Alliances.com. Michael, we've got a little less than a minute left. And you mentioned about your father and the advice that he gave you of, hey, you got to take this meeting with the big dogs, right? So tell us about one or two secrets that he shared with you that you brought into that made you successful. I think it was confidence. There's one, making sure that you have confidence in yourself. Two, focus on the partners. Like, it's not a, you, you can put the right amount of people if they're strategic partners and they help your vision and your business. It's about the collaboration. So, it's one, build your confidence in yourself. Two, focus on strategic partners and how together you can work to, have, to fulfill a vision. Excellent. Well, Michael, confidence and focus on partners. 
You're continuously looking for new ways to do business and keep people healthy. That's a hero, Michael Camarada. Make sure you go to NeptuneCorp.com. This is David Kogan. When we return, the founder of LegalZoom.